all the players there on the same day. <laughs> uh, and the mix is live as well. So, so how long do you envisage this sort of taking? Well, three days. So one day set up, two days recording, and the mix is continuous as we, as we record. And we'll record as many takes as we can. No overdubs. And that's it. Okay, boys. Boys. It's funky jazz music, but really well written. Uh, very thoughtful, thoughtful compositions, uh, catchy uh, melodies. Uh, interesting harmonies. It's not just your average funk where you know, kind of jam on, you know, three, 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 three chords. It's uh, it's on another level. You can hear this music on um, soundtracks for uh, movies, and things like that. I would love to be there. Dave plays the Leslie B3 Hammond organ like, like a beast. And this is very important that he, I say that he plays the organ because, you know, to play this instrument you have to be an organ player. Although obviously it has keys like the piano, you cannot approach this instrument like a pianist because it's a whole different ball game. So, and it doesn't work when pianists use organ sounds. It's a different thing because you can't play your piano stuff and then with an organ sound. It doesn't sound like the real thing because you need to be an, an organ player to get the real thing. And on top of that, you have to have the real instrument. Nothing will sound like what we say up here. And, and I really started to experience it with Dave probably for the first time when, we, when I did my first record because my bass teacher was with Dave in a band and I went to, to my bass teacher and said, and said to him, do you think like Dave will be able to record with me because I heard him play the Hammond organ and it's killing. I just want to get him involved. But I was a student, I was really shy about approaching him. He said, no, no, go and approach him, uh, ask him. And I said, Dave, are you up for playing my chance? Come in the studio and we played. And it was um, 96. And he came and he brought a Leslie, a third floor. We took the Leslie up and I got, this better be good because it's a lot of effort <laughs> to take the Leslie cabinet up. And he sat down and he had like one manual keyboard, uh, uh, organ, kind of a smaller version of the Leslie. And man, the sound is just like, it killed me. And what was great about him, that he, I wrote everything out. There were lots of parts, but you know, this is like when you, when you find a great musician, that they're exceeding immediately what, what, what the part says. <laughs> easier then because you know what you you what you need to interpret and how you, you know and then but it's also sort of it's that balance and then giving you a free uh, you know the freedom to sort of express within what you can add to it so he, you know even though it's very clear what he wants he wants you to bring your personal kind of uh, thing so it's a matter of trust and kind of uh, thing so it's a good it's a good balance you know so you don't ever feel that okay this is Stefan's thing and I can't my opinion or say, oh, look, I, I think... Oh, no, no, I mean, you know, always in rehearsals, I mean, if there's any suggestions, you know, it's, it's totally up, you know, we've all had sort of, at some point, right, maybe sort of had suggestions about arrangements or things like that, and you know, it's perfectly willing to listen. Yeah, he's open to it. <laughs> I think it's developing, and I think I think it's getting uh, uh, right, right now. And I think what the recording we're do doing right now is, is 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 much more raw and much more earthy. Oh, Tim! Yes. Ch 
Jim, great guy. Jim, a true rock and roll animal. And this is really important to say that he's a rock and roll animal because a lot of tenor players uh, uh, come and obviously they're jazz players and they're, some of them can be, a lot of them aren't of course, but a lot of them are, they're set in the, in the jazz mindset, which is like, you know, quiet, acoustic piano, acoustic bass, and them being the, the equivalent of a singer, if not diva, and, and wanting it fairly quiet so they can obviously sit on top of the band and do their thing. And Jim has never, and this is why he's rock and roll Jim, has never been intimidated by the volume of our band, because we allow band. And for most guys that have to play, he's the only guy that has to actually produce the sound without any electrical amplification. I mean, he needs to blow in this horn to actually fly on top of us, which is a huge effort. And he's, uh, he's never, he's not, never said a word about, you guys, can you turn it down or I can't hear myself. He's right in there. He's not in TV. He's just, okay, you guys crank it up, I'll crank it up. I'm right there with you. Amazing force. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure how many tenor players you heard, maybe not that many, but we worked with, with many other guys and, and great musicians, fantastic. But the sound, I mean, I've worked with very few guys with such a big tenor sound. It's just, it's just huge. When you heard it on the last song, at the end, to kind of fly over the band with that energy level is just something else. It's unbelievable. And I'm, I'm really glad that he, he wants to be part of this because clearly it's not for the money. As a soldier, I really suck. <laughs> and hopefully as a musician, I had a bit more chance. I play the instrument named guitar. <laughs> I met Stefan here actually because there, there's a, a through the Berkeley connection. He, he um, I think I was teaching at Musicians Institute. I think he knew somebody from there. Um, we sort of got together, we played, and you know, we sort of stuck to one another's tales. And, you know, for, oh wow, ten years or something. Like that. That's it. Amazing. There's a few sections where we play in unison, and, and I love to write unison between Iran and myself because it's the same thing, guitar and me, and we just looking into this one thing. And again, I, I don't have to think about it. It's amazing energy, like this, he's like a big dog, you know? He's like, hey guys, he's happy to see everyone, and he always treats everyone the same and he's most of the time a really happy, open guy and his energy, you know, comes also out in his playing. When he plays like solos or guitar and you can see them play live, people really kind of, the, the energy level is coming really across and people go after his solo last week, they like went off for two minutes and we were laughing. He was stopping playing, he stopped playing, I nearly stopped playing because we were just laughing and the crowd kept on going because he's so, you know, he's giving a lot, he's giving a lot of energy out. And, and I love him for that. He's very vibrant and he's, he's always like that to anyone. It doesn't matter who it is. He's always completely consistent. One of the guys in the band I'm really enjoying playing with is Mike, the other American. Uh, I like his concept of time and uh, I'm enjoying hooking up with him that way. So. I just think just, just moving, ramping things up from, from where we are in a, in a logical way, you know, would be good. Well, it's 
actually, the question should be, what is it, what do you love about Mike's drumming? <laughs> because it's not like, I love his drum. You know, when you make music, you know you can't get in the zone when, you, when you're losing yourself and you don't have to think about anything else. So if it's just him and I playing, and this is it's kind of awkward, sounds like a paradox, but I do not think about him at all. It is such a comfortable space. You know, it's like you walk into your room where you want some privacy or you put in some comfy clothes like your old trainers that you wore for ages and it's just it's just perfect and you feel comfortable. And playing with him is like that. It's kind of you just slip into something cozy that you're really used to. It's you it's not there's no distraction. I never have to think about what he does. Well, I could I could sing you beats, you know, like boom, back, boom, back, boom, back. That's for sure. Um, well, I'd like to see us uh, still recording. Uh, I'd like to see us recording in such a way that uh, Stefan doesn't have to foot the bill for it. You know, that someone else, uh, you know, record company. You know, if that concept still exists at that point, um, is is going. Yeah, these guys are artists. You know, and we will, you know, we will support that. When I play, and he plays. It's just like one thing and we always know we have to work on something when when he starts to notice me or I have, I start to notice him then we know something is not right but generally uh, we don't even think about each other and this is amazing because I play with lots of other musicians as well and you often sometimes you play and you just all you do is think about what's happening with the group what's happening with the drummer how come that we're not blending how come that we're not becoming this sort of heartbeat of the band and, and with him it's just so easy I just I love it. It's great. I mean, he's, I mean, he's the man. He really is. On top of that, coming from where he's coming from, the American culture, when he was about similar age when I was in Austria, he would be already in the college, big man, whatever, playing all the stuff that I had to learn much later. So this whole, he's got the whole music that I discovered later ingrained because that's, you know, obviously the American culture there grew up. With, with, with jazz and kids that talk to any American and they will know about jazz and Charlie Parker they will be able to mention some people because they probably very likely that they play in a high school big band. In Austria the equivalent would be playing in the, in the brass band, in the village brass band which is completely different and that also is a very important factor to me because it just feels great. When he plays it sounds like the records I checked out. exactly what he wants and he doesn't like any compromise so if you want to do a, a recording like this you know live straight to tape you gotta have a room that sounds good you gotta have good microphones and why if if you're investing a lot of money in this project uh, I think you should go best or one of the best you can get. Uh, they're all playing as a band rather than doing the drums and then overdubbing. Other things, there's going to be no overdubs, never going back to it. Um, they're not playing with headphones, no fallback. This is what he wanted and he gets it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I work with quite a few bands, um, doing all kinds of music. Um, and how do these guys stack up? As musicians, unbelievable, really, top of the game. 